You already know what episode this is. <sighs> What's good, everybody? Welcome back. This is obviously one of our big things. Um, it's obviously one of the videos that's been most requested. Everybody wants to see all of this madness. We have a lot of fungal pops. And when I say a lot, I'm not saying like 20. We probably have, I think I have like 130 by myself. If anybody didn't know and you're barely getting into Funko Pops or you you have Funko Pops and you want to be more organized, you can download the Funko app on your phone and you can scan all of your Funko Pops into the app and it'll tell you how much they're all worth. So I own that are mine. I mean, we have like a shared collection now, but before, and I guess kind of now, some of them I would say are more mine, but um, I have 230. So, and then if you just, you can check the PPG values for all of them and especially for like the Disney ones right now for Splash Mountain, they're going up. <laughs> we have a little mix of everything. Everything from like superheroes to anime because of Cody and then like shows I like, like We Bear Bears and I have a Rick and Morty one somewhere in here, but just yeah. a little bit of everything. This video we're gonna do uh, top five, our favorites that we have in the collection, obviously, all of them are my favorite. If I own it, it's either because I like it or it was gifted to me. Um, so I'm not buying Funko Pops to fill a collection or anything like that. So I like all of them, obviously. Um, but to narrow it down to five was kind of hard. I think the whole reason I got into Funko Pops was, well, I guess that could be my me leading into Funko Pop 1, but... So I had gone to the 99 cent store back when I was in college, maybe like my second or third year of college, and I saw Brian Johnson. And if any of you know, Brian Johnson's from The Breakfast Club, he's the nerdy kid. And I got him simply because I thought he was cute and I had never seen Pops before. So I was like, oh my gosh, wow, what a cutie. So I picked him up and I got him for 99 cents because that's what he was worth there at the time and it's kind of interesting too because with packaging you can see from the older and the newer pops like the way the fungo logo has changed and the address so that's kind of cool my runner-up because i have way too many to choose my runner-up like collect little collection i'm missing two i'm missing megavolt uh, the regular and the chase and then goslin i think but it's the darkwing duck series um, that series is super nostalgic for me because I would watch it on uh, Toon Disney. It was like the afternoon special stuff. Um, DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, and I don't want to say like Tailspin because I never really watched Tailspin, but Rescue Rangers definitely. Um, those are some of my favorite animated shows. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with these for my runner-up. I think that's what makes Pop so special too is, I mean, their whole thing was like Funko is... Fun co. You want to keep it fun and relatable for everybody and they're called pops because it's pop culture. So that's why I think everybody can get into it because it's a little bit of what everybody loves, what they grew up with. They also have like ad icons like for example, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Like everybody knows who the Pillsbury Doughboy is for the most part. You remember seeing him on the commercials and he goes, hoo -hoo! you know, like there's little things for everybody. Next I'm going to do my favorite collection. It's going to be kind of hard to put them all up at once, but I'll just, I can hold them. So first up for my favorite collection, this is the Universal Monsters collection. I have the Invisible Man. It's the Chase. I fell in love with him because he's see-through. Next you have Creature from the Black Lagoon, another one of my favorites, also not cheap. <laughs> then you have the Wolfman. Cody got me that one recently, semi-recently. And then you have the Glow in the Dark Bright of Frankenstein. And then, oh no, and then Frankenstein, the Walgreens with a little daisy. And then I have Phantom of the Opera and the Mummy. And then lastly, Dracula. This isn't the Dracula that I want specifically. I mean, it is still part of the Universal Monsters, but it's, it's a different box. And there is a Dracula that comes in the other box, but I have not been able to find it. So... Yeah, definitely for the Universal Monsters Pops, the average PPG is like 40 bucks. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty hefty uh, 
dent in my pocket. Um, for my favorite collection, I I don't have enough arms or space to show you all of them. Um, but it is my Dragon Ball set. I don't have every single one. Uh, I think I'm missing a couple of the Z. Um, I'm missing like two or three of Super, and then of course like OG. I don't. I don't think I only have Bulma and Goku on his Nimbus Cloud from original Dragon Ball. So, um, but that is the the most pops that I have. Um, I don't have like the over 9,000 Majin Vegeta. I don't have. I don't have the Gallic Gun Vegeta, the one that came from I think Chalice, um, and I don't have the Final Flash one. But pretty much anything else. Um, that I'm looking for is kind of expensive, so I'm not in a rush to finish it But it is like the biggest collection I have and it's it's my favorite. Okay, I guess number five would be Rosa. She is a Funko Pop from around the world. That's the Funko stores collab um, It's kind of cute because well one she's a Cholo Squinkle and it's supposed to be representative of Mexican heritage, which I'm Mexican if you didn't know that already but it's also cute because each of these has their own pins so I just I fell in love with her she's so cute this was a really tough decision for me because I I have a lot of pops that I would say are in my top five um I pretty much don't have a top ten it's like everything is five until it's four but and this is around the time when I had like f six or seven Funkos and me, my mom, and my sister went to an antique store, and for some reason, in one of the cases, they had this Dumbo. And if you don't know, uh, Dumbo is my favorite Disney movie, so obviously I wanted to um, include him in the top five, just because my sister got it for me, and it was it's a really special movie to me. So shout out to Ashley. Yeah, shout out to you. It'll always have a special place in my heart. We also have custom Dumbos that we did. It's the one that Leah painted. It's supposed to be the Joker. <laughs> and then here's the one of, ugh, that I painted. Um, it's supposed to be Pink Elephants on Parade. Pink it's elephants on parade. when they all mash together. So what do I, do? What do I, do? <laughs> I was gonna include them with this one, but I don't know. This one is super special to me, so. Keep it with the Disney theme is the Chase Diamond Hot Topic exclusive Eeyore that Cody got me. So a running joke when we first met, I mean it's always been a running joke like I said before, my life's been kind of tough. I always joke about being depressed. No, it's not a joke. I know that. But I mean, in light of a dark situation, you kind of have to make fun to get through things. So I've always called myself Eeyore just because of his depressed like demeanor. And so when we went on Winnie the Pooh, I was like, that's me. I'm Eeyore. And like he didn't, I don't think he really fully understood at the time, but anyways, like, that's, Eeyore is just like one of my Disney, uh, favorite Disney characters, so, I love him. Also, he's also worth a lot PPG-wise, so. Yeah, and we'll put all the PPGs on the screen so you can see exactly how much. It's not necessarily the price that makes him our favorite, it's kind of the, the stories that they have, like, behind them. My fourth one, or I guess my top four, is going to be Ryuk from Death Note. Um, this one is kind of special to me because um, when I first had watched the whole series through, I think I had like watched it again the next day. Like I binged it all instead of watching it like, you know, one at a time. And it it's not something that really like sticks out to me or it like speaks to me. It's just an anime that I really enjoyed for the for the two times that I watched it and uh, Ryuk is one of my favorite characters and I watched him go from so I got him for like nine bucks at FYE and I watched his price go from nine bucks I think now whatever it is on the screen um, I think it's like 35 something like that it's in like the 30 range so um, it's not bad I do need to complete this set it has four other ones with L and light um, but lights like 45 bucks and L's like 25 30 bucks too so uh, and I have not seen them around at all so I don't know maybe eBay or something but um so yeah it's just one of my favorite animes and it's uh it's one of my favorite pops so 
What is your oh, number, number three. three? We're getting to the good stuff now. I think number three has to be my Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. Another one of my favorite movies. Also one of my favorite rides at Disneyland, even though it's kind of dark, cheesy, and provocative because of Jessica Rabbit. But I don't know. I just grew up watching Roger Rabbit. It was a movie that my dad had introduced me to. And I just, I fell in love with it. I love the whole realism with like animation. It's just something that's really cool, especially for that time. So that's like, this is one of my favorites. Also a pop that we bought for a relatively low PPG and now it's skyrocketed it like more than doubled. Yeah, 190 for, that's doubling your money. Figure out the data, put it on the screen, but there is a documentary out there. It used to be on Netflix. Now you can just YouTube it, but it's about how Funko started and if, Nobody knew this before uh, it started on you know, at Universal City Walk at that Sparky store. That used to be where Funko went in and talked to the owner was like, they first started with Wacky, Wob Wacky Wobblers, which are these little, <laughs> little bobbleheads. And so that's what their first push was. And then eventually it turned into this, but it was just like a community that was able to come together and like, enjoy their childhood they create these life-size boxes so you can pretend to be a toy it was just like fun events like that that really brought people together um but it it's honestly something that i wasn't into before like i had like uh i don't have my first pop unfortunately because uh the dog had chewed it um but when i bought the first one it had been back when I was into Overwatch and I was really into it and I saw these little figures and I was like, oh, the box design is super cool. Um, how they're like, they don't, the, the, the only real thing they do is they give them those, those dot eyes, but the rest of the character is like, it's full thing just shrunk down. So that's what really stuck out to me. It was action figures I could keep in the box and really like enjoy and not have to feel like I have to play with them to give my value out of them. So my number three, is going to be my Goten and Trunks that I got from Anime Expo, I'm going to say 2018. Oh, duh. It's the <laughs> Funimation 2018 exclusive. This one holds a lot of value to me because one of the first conventions that I had ever been to uh, with my cousin Kale, shout out to Kale, um, me and him went in the day just kind of like, me and him are both really into anime, so when we went, it was like, kids in a candy store. The first thing we saw was like a statue of, of course, Goku Black. And we were like, oh, it's 25 bucks. We got to get it. So we're walking around and we see the Funimation booth. And I know Kale is not really into Funkos like that, but I saw this and I was like, oh my God, I have to get it. Because if you don't know, this little guy is my favorite character. And uh, when they fuse, it's also another one of my favorite characters. So, of, of course, I had to get them, and they they were like 30 bucks. I think that's just like convention taxes and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. I just, I really like that they're doing the fusion dance. Yeah, that's my number three. Number two, we're number getting deep. Two. This is like, this is sentimental territory. So I think number two is actually gonna be my Sam. Ooh. Um, if you don't know, Sam is from Trick or Treat. It's a cult classic. Kind of a weird movie. If you're parental, if you have parental guidance, don't watch this movie. There's a lot of sexuality in it, as all horror movies have. Mm -hmm. But um, just a super cute character. Also, one of my favorite mazes at Horror Nights. And oh, side note with Horror Nights, I, th I think I need to insert this for the public. I'm a huge horror fan. Obviously, me and Cody have been watching. Um, different drone footage and so far it looks like Horror Nights Hollywood is not going to happen. They've been taking down the mazes on the back lot. So, I mean, if there's a small chance of positivity, some of the mazes haven't been taken down yet. Maybe they're just going to decrease the number of mazes. That's what I was thinking. But I'm like 80, 90% sure it's not going to happen. Especially with the spike and everybody getting, um, you know, the coronavirus, so... Yeah. We'll see, but anyways, back to Sam. One of my favorites, I think his PPG value right now is 110. Um, when I first got him, he was gifted to me when I first got him, though his PPG value was 90, so... Yeah. That's Watch crazy. Trick or Treat if you're allowed to. My number two... 
so this is a pop I bought back in. I, let's start with some backstory. Uh, one of my favorite rides at Disneyland is Indiana Jones uh, in the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Mm -hmm. I, I call it Indiana Jones. Um, ever since I was a kid, like I remember being four or five, and we would go, and that's like that and Splash Mountain and Pirates Haunted Mansion. Those are like the rides that if I did not do them, like either we went at night to catch a couple rides or we would go on a weekend. If I didn't ride those four rides, I had a bad day at Disney because it adds, it, it's, it's such a weird thing to say you're attached to rides, but they bring me such a sense of like adventure and, and like every time I ride it, it's like I wrote it for the first time. I'll never get tired of them. Um, so when I saw this pop, and it was it was so expensive I think it was like a hundred and eighty five bucks and I was like I don't want to spend that much like at all uh, at least not until you know I had the disposable funds for it and I had seen there was a bid on eBay for like 35 40 bucks so I took a chance and I bid on it and um, I ended up winning so this is my 2016 uh, comic-con exclusive limited edition Indiana Jones from the uh, Temple of the Forbidden Eye. It's the, the ride at Disney. There's three other ones. I have the 10 inch Indiana Jones holding the idol and he's got his whip. Um, there's the one with the Jeep which is the parks exclusive and then the one with the machete which I think is also a park exclusive. Um, but this one means it, of course you know I'm gonna I'm not gonna say the PPG but I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Um, it does it's crazy that it it's like that and it's crazy how I got it for 40 bucks and the ride is amazing I love it it makes me feel like a like a jungle trekker and Harrison so, Ford is just a great actor that too so this is my number two I really love this pop it's probably the most expensive one in my collection um, but yeah I don't have very many expensive ones so it, it does not compare compared to the other ones so Number one. Number one. Okay, so backstory before I introduce you to this pop. Come last year, I was at Halloween Horror Nights with Andre. Um, we, I told him, Andre, we need to go from Halloween Horror Nights to the West Covina Mall and we're going to sleep in the parking lot because there's a pop that's going to be released from Killer Clowns from Outer Space and they're very limited so we're going to go with, like as soon as we're done here and go wait in line. I've never camped out for anything in my life. So we're exhausted. If anybody's ever been to Horror Nights, you get exhausted from all the walking. We had a couple of monsters with us and a bag of chips because we were like, we need a snack or something in the morning. So we go to West Covina Mall and we park in front of the Red Robins and we're just sitting there in the parking lot and poor Andrew was exhausted. So I said, here's some blankets that I have in my car knock out i'll kind of be in and out of sleep just so nobody tries to like scare us either or like <laughs> anything like that so i couldn't really sleep but i was just kind of there and then uh it started to get around 5 4 35 ish and we moved the car and we're driving around because there are different spots outside west covina mall that lines start for these things because it was this is, I think it was after, uh, there was for the 2019 uh, fall convention. So there were a bunch of Star Wars releases that were happening up um, at Box Lunch. There was some Dragon Ball and I forget what else that was being released that day at Hot Topic. And then GameStop was doing Killer Clowns, um, a couple of other video games, I think. But um, anyway, so uh, turns out that the line was starting in front of Red Robin there was one guy ahead of me and Andre um, this guy was he's the one that actually told us about the Funko app and like he was really on top of his stuff I'm sure this guy is like hardcore but um, Andre really wanted a Funko from Hot Topic so when they started telling us that the different lines were gonna move Andre went for the line for Hot Topic and then I stayed for the GameStop line because that's where Slim was the sad thing is about these uh, stores like GameStop and I mean, I, I like GameStop, but I mean, everybody knows that running jokes with GameStop. Apparently, the employees have this habit of, you know, taking before the releases happen. So there's only limited quantities because for Funko, 
When they ship you a box of pops, there was at least four in the box. That's the way they're shipped. So when I showed up, they had a paper on the door showing how many they had of each pop, and they only had two of Slim, which makes no sense, which means that they already put aside two for themselves because they don't come shipped in two. So lo and behold, I got lucky, no sleep, getting a headache, in a bad mood because I was hungry and tired, but I got a Slim and he's a 2019 convention exclusive and this is one of my favorites not only because it's another cult classic horror movie but i think just the whole story behind it me and andre were laughing after the fact that we got our pops and we were like we're never gonna do this again like this was crazy and you know <laughs> we're out of our minds for doing what we did so i really like killer clowns that movie was <laughs> i i had just seen it a couple months ago um for the first time because i i do like horror movies um but I'm obviously I'm not a horror fan like Aaliyah like she is really into it um, so she had told me she's like oh you have to watch Killer Clown so I watched it and I can see why it's a cult classic it is a very good movie although it's very B movie ish kind of cheesy it's very very good so now mine kind of lacks in comparison now you kind of set a, a big stage and mine's just gonna be kind of lame so uh, ever since Aaliyah had came into my life and she uh, told me about her Funko Pops and I, I like I was into it but not at the level she was um, I didn't even know that that there were these and they existed um, but my number ones are going to be my Freddy Funkos now um, if you don't know I love baseball I used to play baseball this this pop, it's not like it holds a lot of sentimental value. It's just the fact that Freddie's wearing a baseball uniform. Um, that, it, I don't know. It just, to me, these Freddie Funkos, like some of them can be super expensive. But it's cool that the company uses their mascot and puts them in these different, like this one's in a Batman swimsuit. And he's got the Batman surfboard, like... I don't know of any other company who puts their mascot in their product and also uses the licensed like IPs. I just think it's the the coolest thing to me that Funko has a Freddy in a bat suit and in like a real world baseball because their uh, Everett Aqua Sox is their um, is their team and they also I believe they have a Aqua Sox pop but their team is the uh, Everett Aqua Sox, and they have a baseball line, um, and then he's in a bat suit, and then also this one's from the Fun Club, I don't know if you could subscribe to this still, um, I got it just with this, I didn't get the lanyard and all of that, uh, but that's another Freddy Funko, I also have the Pop Town with the HQ, um, I can't reach over and pick it up, but it's down there, the fact that Funko does this, this is why the Freddies are my favorite. I don't know, I hold them all in a special place, right here. So if anybody's looking to get into Pops, um, some of the places that we've gone to, or like online that we've uh, bought in, or bought in, that's not <laughs> Sorry. Let's restart, let's restart. <laughs> some of the Funkos that we've collected are from various retailers such as Box Lunch, Hot Topic, GameStop, FYE, you can also get them from Third party, so go to Frank and Sons if you don't know where Frank and Sons is. It's the warehouse that um, used to be Sam's Club in the City of Industry. They just reopened. They're open Wednesdays and Saturdays. So get your butt down there if you want to collect some. So if you want an interactive experience, Funko interactive experience, check out Funko Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard. It recently opened because HQ is in Everett, Washington. That's the original Funko store. So check it out, they have different displays, different areas, different themes, Toy Story, um, anime, Star Wars, Rick and Morty, Stranger Things, uh, Game of Thrones, horror. They have a whole room dedicated to like Captain Crunch, the Colonel, Colonel Sanders, uh, like just ads in general, like old ad icons, like uh, the dude from the, like the Twinkie, Twinkie the Kid. And stuff like that so they have a bunch of displays you take pictures it's free so you don't have to worry about going in there and paying a fee to get in like you can just go and see if it's your thing see if you find any pops that really stand out to you and you're like oh I like this series or I like that movie 
Um, they also have exclusive merchandise like t-shirts that you can't get anywhere else except there. Um, they have a lot of exclusive lounge flies. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're interested, check them out. Again, completely free and all their pops are at base value of 10 bucks, which is what a common pop costs, so. Yeah. To conclude, I know we've been putting in our stories that we're going to have a giveaway soon. Unfortunately, because of the coronavirus over here in California, all the box lunch stores did close and they are only available online. So I did already order the giveaway stuff. Um, it should be shipping in the next week, hopefully. I mean, it says it's been out for shipment, but there's no tracking on it yet. Um, eventually we'll have it here or we'll post it online, but um, it's going to include a backpack, two t-shirts, a cap, a bucket hat, a pin, and a card holder. So just stay tuned for that. That is all one gift for one person. Uh, we'll give you details about how to enter on the Instagram page. So just be ready for that because um, we'll put it on our story and the post. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, we also have the smaller prizes, which are those Baby Yoda cups that we brought up in our live. So I'll link both of our socials as well as the Funko Instagram that we have in the description as well. Um, the Funko is at the Funko chest. Um, that's where we post all of our really like pop related stuff. Um, so go give those a follow. And Star Wars Sunday, Monster Monday, Funko Fridays. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's it. I don't know how to end these videos ever. <laughs>